Well, I'm joined right now by Democratic Congresswoman Karen Bass from California. David Jolly is a former Republican Congressman from Florida. Ruth Marcus is Deputy Editorial Page Editor of the Washington Post. Thank you all. In that order, Congresswoman, uh, this is interesting because Lindsey Graham apparently stood up to Trump and said, right. you can't use that kind of term. A lot of us came from poor countries with not many well-educated people. That's why they came here. That's the nature of this country. You know, as somebody once said, nobody's grandfather was the Duke of Marlborough who came to this country. Your <laughs> thoughts on this, President? And these two senators from, uh, well, well uh, the two of them, one, one of them's from Arkansas and one's from, uh, I forget, he's from Georgia. And the two of them are just laying their bodies on the tracks exactly. saying Trump didn't say something that it's now pretty clear he did say. Exactly. I think that they're flat out lying and maybe they're getting something from, from the president for it. But, you know, I applaud Lindsey Graham. I also applaud uh, Senator Flake, too, because he said that he had heard about it before it went to the news. I just think that it's another tragic moment in Trump's presidency. I'm headed to Africa on Friday. And believe me, I know that the heads of state that we will be meeting with will expect to hear an explanation from us about what the president said. You know, I'm glad you're going over there because there's some really good, serious leaders of Africa now. I'm so hopeful. I'm sure you are about Cyril Ramaphosa being head of the ANC in South Africa. Yes. I've been waiting for him for a long time, to be honest. And then you've got people like Ian Kama from Botswana. There are people who are really trying to lead their people over there. And what do you think their reaction, what you've heard in terms of your heads up about what you're going to face over there, what has been their emotional reaction to being referred to in this way by the President well, of the United States? Well, they are absolutely furious. I mean, there were statements that were released from the African Union. I went uh, to an African celebration here in Los Angeles with Ethiopians, and when I apologized on behalf of Congress and the United States, they stood up and cheered in applause. I know that they uh, are very offended by this, and I know that you're well aware that African immigrants are some of the highest educated immigrants. So when he's talking about merit, I don't know what established merit more than education. So just the flat out lying of my colleagues, I'm very disappointed. In. I tell you, I spent some time with some uh, Nigerian parliamentarians one time. What a sophisticated group. I mean, they really are by anybody's world standards. Anyway, I want to go now to, uh, to uh, David Jolly. Your thoughts about this as a, as a Republican. I think the Republican Party, I know it's not the party of Lincoln in a long time. Sure. But what do people think when they hear the president using this word? I mean, he sounds like a real estate developer. I guess that's what he is, talking about a rough neighborhood sure. in the worst possible language. But he's referring to people as well, obviously. Well, what it suggests is that the words of Dr. King and his vision is unfulfilled. We have a president uh, today in 2017 who judges somebody by the color of their skin, not by the content of their character. And we have Republican leaders continuing to look the other way in face of policies that further that divide of economic equality with people of color. And, you know, the words of Dr. King on silence uh, teach us all something. He, he suggested in some very famous words uh, that silence, beginning to be silent, is the beginning of the end, if you will, and that the yeah. words of our enemies are less important than the silence of our friends. Republican leaders continue to be silent in the face of this president's actions. They're bringing dishonor not just to Dr. King, but dishonor upon themselves as well. Yeah, I'm going to read uh, from his letter from the Birmingham jail at the end of the program for my finish tonight, because words, they're very powerful, those words they have from him about you either pushing a house ahead or you're not. Let me hear U.S. Congressman John Lewis, who was with Dr. King. He's, of course, the congressman from Georgia now. He worked with Dr. King in the civil rights fights in the 60s. He didn't min mince words when asked about the president just yesterday. Here's John Lewis. And I think this man, this president, is taking us back to another place. Do you think President Trump is a racist? I think he is a racist. Well, Mr. Lewis further said on MSNBC that he does not plan to attend President Trump's State of the Union address later this month. Here he goes. At this junction, I do not plan to attend uh, the State of the Union. I cannot, and, and in all good conscience, um, be in a room with what he has said about so many Americans. I just cannot do it. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be honest with myself. What a soulful man. Have you ever spent time with him? John? I have. It makes you feel and just good to be near him because of his history, having exactly. his head bashed in, you know, amazing. Uh, and when the, he uses the racist word to describe the president, you kind of have just this intake of breath. Like, yeah. this is where we are. But this is where we are.
Well, let's talk about the president and his usual politics here. Uh, going after, let me go back to Karen Bass, a congresswoman. He goes after, quote, Dickie Durbin. That's the classic eighth grade schoolyard way of taking on somebody who's challenged his word. You know, the diminutive Dickie. You know, it goes back to the old nicknaming he did in the campaign. That's what an eight year old mind would do. But here's the president of the United States doing it. Exactly, and I think that he has just reduced the office of the presidency to such a level. You know, when I also think about the African countries, he doesn't seem to realize our strategic relationship with Africa, especially from the military sense. And when he uh, uh, responds on such a juvenile level, it just leaves leaders around the world perplexed. And then members of Congress, like myself, we have to clean up after this regularly. Well, I'll go back to that. I'm going back to David Jolly. Again, you serve with these people. Why is a guy like Purdue of Georgia and Tom Cotton of Arkansas, why are they laying on the tracks for this guy? Uh, George Will's going to be coming on the program later, and he argues, I can get ahead of him, say, senators should represent the legislative body, which is a countervailing power to the presidency. They shouldn't act like his, uh, his vassals. This is Trump's GOP, and nobody has been successful in challenging him within the party or before the base. And what we're seeing right now is the Republican Party coalescing around uh, the current immigration debate because they don't want DACA. They know if they give in on DACA, the base will revolt. And so yeah. they're in a very tricky situation. But nobody has been able to challenge this president and win, and we are seeing senators fall like flies in the face of Donald Trump's scare tactics and his bully pulpit. Well, the president told reporters yesterday that he was the least racist person that has ever been interviewed, they have ever interviewed. It's the same line he used on countless occasions to defend himself from such charges. Let's watch the history of his uh, defense. Mm -hmm. I am the least racist person that you've ever met, believe me. The least racist person. Well, I'm probably the least racist person there is. By the way, I am the least, just so you know, I am the least racist person. The least racist person that you've ever seen. I am the least racist person that you have ever met. I am the least racist person. I am the least racist person you've ever met. Number one, I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. Number two, racism. The least racist person. What can I say? In the lives of others, that German movie, they say yes. you can always tell somebody's lying when they use the exact same words every time because they don't want to get hung up. Well, so they use the exact words all the time. Well, not only the exact words all the time, but helpful hint, if someone finds himself constantly, and I trace this back to 2011, I think yes. it's the first time I why found do you the have phrase, to keep doing this? why do you have to keep doing it? So, number one, that's, you've got a problem if you find yourself constantly okay. defending your lack yeah, of I racism. Karen Bass, Congresswoman, let me ask you about this because I think we are Americans and we come from a history of slavery and race and Jim Crow. And I think everybody is a bit tribal. Look, it's just part of our being as, as Americans and everybody, good people fight it from the time they're born. They work against it. They try to outthink it. They work against all the prejudices of their grandparents. And I got them. I know par grandparents. I know where they were. And, and for Trump to say he's the least, I mean, that, isn't that a little bit arguing too strongly against the charge? <laughs> How well, about well, saying it, I'm working on it or I've been better than my parents or I'm like a lot of people, I really don't want to be a bad guy. No, he's the least, the least you, racist. I just you know, wonder about that as a, as well, a defense I, mechanism. I wonder about it too, but it also makes me wonder what is a racist to him? What does it oh mean? Do you have to be in a sheet? Do you have, I mean, what, what would it be? And for people who say, try to excuse the words and say, well, that's just the way people talk, I remember people saying that about the use of the N-word years ago, too. Well, mm -hmm. it's just a word. So, so mm -hmm. what would a racist be to Trump? Who knows? Yeah, well, he started doing this with neighborhoods, remember? What do you exactly. got to lose? I mean, it is a, a, a new thing for him. I think he thinks like a really gross land developer who thinks in terms of real estate, not in terms of humanity. Anyway, Congresswoman Karen Bass, it's always great to have you on.